So in section 2.4, it talks about given the zeros, write the equation, and given the real zeros on a graph, you're going to have to find the imaginary zeros. So I just want to start with this concept. If you had this, how would you solve that? Okay, subtract the 9 over, and then when you square root, you would for sure remember plus or minus, right? And then, yes, the i to take out the square root of negative 1, and then you'd still have this, so we'd end up with 3i. So, does this factor... This is not a real solution, right? So if it asked for only real solutions, this would have none. Does this factor, if we had like a squared minus uh, 49, it would factor a plus 7, a minus 7, right? Whoa. But when we have a plus and a perfect square, it does not factor with real numbers. But it actually factors x plus 3i and x minus 3i because it's the same as this remember we started with this question up here this is the same thing and these were the solutions so these are the factors okay so if i foiled this back together i would get x squared plus 3i x minus 3i times x minus 9i squared this would be 0, and a minus 9 times i squared would become positive 9. Everybody okay? All right, because this is what's on the quiz tomorrow. Um, complex conjugate zeros come in pairs. So if 3i is a 0, negative 3i also has to be a 0. Okay, if 2 minus i is a 0, so is 2 plus i. And those are far more complicated when you have to write them out as factors, but we're just going to do these easy ones today. So the quiz question looks something like this. It says, find a factored form in least degree, I think it says, with zeros given here and real coefficients. Okay, as soon as you see this positive 7i, you need to realize what also has to be a 0, guys. Negative 7i. Okay, everybody good? They come in pairs. All right, now you have to write them as factors. So what would 5 look like as a factor instead of a 0? Okay, and negative 3 would be? Okay, and 7i would be? And negative 7i would be, okay, we good? Now, do we have only real coefficients in this problem? No. So this is where you have to do a little extra work. You have to figure out how that would look if you foiled it together, because right now we have imaginary numbers. You can leave these as x minus 5 and x plus 3. But what would happen back here? x times x would be x squared, x times 7i would be plus 7i times x, this one would be a negative 7i times x, and back here, what would that become? Negative 49i squared, okay. These two middle terms make zero, everybody good there? And negative 49 times i squared is negative 49 times negative 1, so it becomes plus 49. So we foiled those together and we wound up with this. So does this y equals polynomial have zeros at those four places and it now has only real coefficients? Okay. So that's how you are to leave it. It says factored form, but it also says that it has to have real coefficients. This does not factor other than imaginary coefficients. Okay, so this might be the question tomorrow. Write a polynomial function of least degree with real coefficients in factored form that has zeros of 6 
plus or minus 4, and 9i. As soon as you see 9i, your dot, dot, dot means you need to know to add what? Negative 9i. Everybody going to remember that tomorrow? Okay. If there's a 0 here, we write x minus 6, and we're good because that one's real. What about this one? x minus 4 and x plus 4 are zeros. Everybody okay? And then we have x minus 9i and x plus 9i, but we can't leave them like that because we have imaginary coefficients. So what do we do? Yep, x squared. Then what's going to happen? We'll have a plus 9ix and a minus 9ix and a minus 81i squared, which will become Got it? So that question is not going to mess you up. We will practice it one more time tomorrow, but it's on Friday's quiz, okay? All right, right now, we are going to talk about the worksheet you picked up. We're just going to do the remembering rational expression and operations side together, and then the other side is your homework. For the next homework check, it's not on this homework check. But please take the notes right now so you can go back later and look. Ready? All right. Number one, it just says simplify, but it has a multiplication. Does anybody remember how this works? Mm. Flip it around. When do I flip it around? If it says divide, I got to change. This one already says multiply. Okay. Remember the whole killing kittens slide? We can't divide out 5a and 5a here, right? Because they're glued to something else. What can we do, though? Okay, so we're going to do this and then see what divides out, okay? So what can I take out of 8a minus 64? And that would leave a minus 8. And down here an A minus 2. What about back here on this guy? Take a 5 out of the top, and I'd have A minus 2, right? <coughs> Take a 5 out of the bottom, and I'd have A plus 3. Now, multiplying means everything on the top goes together and everything on the bottom goes together, but what can I divide out now? I can divide a 5. Anything else? The entire factor a minus 2 divides out. Anything else? No. So our answer, and you can leave it in factored form. Okay. Everybody feel like they get it? Remember this stuff? That's not a good plan. Okay, so try number two. A lot of factoring on this one. What can I take out up here? Five. What can I take out down on the bottom? Six and an M squared, which would leave what? Ah, m minus 4. Back here I have a 6m squared. How does the bottom factor? It's a trinomial. Thank you. Um, yes. Okay. Anything reduce out, Cameron, this is for you. The whole 6m squared piece. Yes, even though they're top and bottom here, it doesn't matter. Anything on the top can divide out with anything on the bottom. Yep. 
don't lose that 5 there. And we could have written this m squared minus m minus 6. I just always leave things in factored form in case something would have divided out. And because we're going to need factored form when we come time to get common denominators and solve, or when it comes time to graph, there'll be vertical asymptotes. Those are all concepts for next week. We good? Okay, what's the next section? Divide, so we need to flip the second one, right? But as I rewrite it, what can I take out of the top of this red one right here? A 7R, does that sound right? What's left? An R plus 10, does that work? And on the bottom is an R plus 5. Okay, now when we change it to multiply, this becomes the new top. What can I take out of those? An 8 and an R squared. That will leave R plus 5, 8R cubed plus 40R squared. If you kind of multiply it back in, make sure it works. All right, then this is our new bottom, and that would be a trinomial, so we would need an R and an R. Um, I'm thinking 10 and 5 to make 50, and 5 plus the 10 and minus the 5, yes? Okay, now what can I cancel or reduce? Divide out R plus 5, R plus 10. Okay, and what do I get when I multiply everything together that's left on the top. Yep, we're multiplying, so we get 56R cubed, R minus 5. Now, can we still divide out one more R? No, it's glued to this minus 5 down here. Everybody okay? Can you try the next one? Anybody figure out the top here? Okay. Oh, interesting. Did anybody else wind up x minus 9 cancels, but there's still an x minus 9 left? Okay. Doesn't matter which one you divide out with that one on the bottom there, but x minus 8 also divides out. So we end up with what? Everybody okay? <clears throat> All right. Then comes the trouble. Because we can only add and subtract fractions if they have a common denominator. Ugh. Okay. So this factor has nothing in common with this factor. So the common denominator is going to have to have both. Um. So I have a 6 over an x plus 6, and it's being added to an x plus 2 over a 5x plus 2. This one needs to multiply by what? Five x plus two over five x plus two. And this one back here needs to multiply by an x plus 6 over x plus 6. Okay. And just in case there's a bunch of simplifying later, guess what we need to do on the top anyway? We need to go ahead and 
combine everything. We can leave the bottom factored. So we're going to have an x plus 6 times a 5x plus 2. But what do we get here if I distribute? Anybody? Okay. And then back here, if I FOIL all that together, I'll end up with some more terms. Yep, a 2x and a 6x for the inside and outside and a 12. Okay. So clean that top up for me, and what do we actually have up there? Thirty x, two x, and six x would be thirty eight x. Twelve and twelve would be twenty four. Okay. Factors or not? Factors are 24, that'll make 38. I don't think so, right? Okay, so we can be done? Yeah. I really love to grade those. Okay. Let's try 6. Uh, we could take a 3 out here, right? But I don't think it's going to matter. The common denominator is still going to have to have what? Yeah. I don't know if that was helpful or not helpful. Okay. So 5x is currently over a 3 and an x minus 4. So what does it need to multiply by? An x plus 5 over x plus 5. All right, and then there was a plus 6x over an x plus 5, which now needs to multiply by a 3 and an x minus 4. Okay, lovely. So the new denominator has what? Okay. Let's distribute this one. We end up with a 5x squared plus 25x. But what can we do back here? What would that become? It was multiplying, right? So in 18x, everybody okay? And then we can distribute it. 18x squared minus 72x, is that right? Lovely. Combining the top gives me 23x squared minus, I don't know, something 747? What could we take out of the top? We could take an x out, right? But would it divide out with anything in the denominator? No, so I'm okay if you just leave it. If you were worried about it trying, you could do... This would be okay as well. Nothing divides out, though, so we're good. Blech. We got two more? We got to subtract. Ooh, somebody, what would somebody do that would be horribly wrong? Just, like, put a five on that one and a five up top, maybe? <laughs> yeah, no. Because this doesn't work. This is a totally separate factor. So we're going to have to multiply them both again. Okay, so we have 3 over 5b plus 3. Oops, I can't write.
And that will need to multiply by a what? Yep, to get the common denominator. All right, then minus gets really tricky because we're going to have to distribute that negative somewhere. But let's start out by just saying we had a b plus 5 over a b plus 3. That now needs to multiply by what? Over 5b plus 3. Okay. The denominators are the same, even though they're in a different order. So somewhere down there, we have a 5b plus 3 times a b plus 3. Okay, let's multiply those two together, and what do we get? Plus 9. But I think we need to multiply these together. But then we're still going to have to do what when we're all done? Subtract all of those, right? So I'm going to re go ahead and write minus. You could write it up above and then distribute the negative. But if I foiled those together, 5b times b would be 5b squared. b times 3 would be plus 3b. 5 times 5b would be plus 25b. And 5 times 3 would be plus 15. But I still need to do what? Distribute the negative. So it becomes 3b plus 9 minus 5b squared minus 3b minus 25b minus 15. Could have combined some terms along the way if you wanted. Anybody get a final answer? These drop out? Woo! So excited. We have a negative 5b squared. Is that the highest power up there? And then the t minus 25b? And 9 minus 15 is negative 6? Oh, I'll take a negative out just to see if I think anything would factor. 5b squared, then it would be plus 25b plus 6. 5b and b. Six and one would be eleven. Three and two would be seventeen. Two and three would be thirteen. I don't think it factors. Do you guys think it factors? Okay. So I think we could just leave it like this and it would be okay. Is that the last one? I got one more. All right. Okay. Three over. Do you want to factor it or leave it? We take out a 4, it would be an x plus 2. What's that one going to need to multiply by? An x plus 1 over an x plus 1. And then back here, I have minus 2 over x plus 1, which is going to need to multiply by what? A 4 and an x plus 2. Okay. <coughs> Denominator has a 4, an x plus 2, and an x plus 1. Okay. Yeah, that did not go well at all. I don't know if that's the tablet or just me. Most likely just me. <coughs> All right, so we got to distribute a 3 up here, which gives us what? 
plus 3. What are we distributing back here? Yeah, I would distribute all that as a negative 8. I would make that plus negative 2 times 4 or negative 8. Distributing back there be a negative 8x minus 16. Okay, what does the top become? Yeah, other than a negative, I'm not thinking there's anything we can do, right? Yeah, it was. Okay, you have some just like it on the other side. Homework questions, rest of the hour. Anybody? Anybody?